Turn off all alarms. Keep on working. Stay strong. Stay vigilant. Keep it moving right along. What's happening in your life today? It is an early morning on the Pacific time zone. It's cold. It's kind of chilly today. What's the temperature outside? It's 57 degrees. That's chilly. Chilly. Chilly, 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 chilly. Thank you, Leonard. I am just so excited because last night, Cookie Marenko and I sat here, and then Rob Morocco, well, I'm Marenko, Morocco, Mamina. Mamina, Marenko, Morocco, if it were alphabetical. Mamina, Morocco. Mamina, Mamina Marenko, Morocco. Mamina, Marenko, Morocco. Mamina, Marenko, Morocco. I think Morocco, starting out with Morocco is easy. Morocco, Marenko, Mamina. Morocco, Mamenko. Morocco, Mamina, Marenko. Morocco, Mamina, Marenko. Awesome. Good morning, Patty. Hi, Patty. William Pearl is saying hello, everyone. Oh, Mamina, Marenko. Mayor. Hi, Mayor. Illinois. Pennsylvania and somebody else because there are three of you here right now. Thank you for watching. So yeah, that was last night. If you didn't watch last night's show and you want to learn a little bit about audiophile and um, their incredible hobby of supporting music, check it out. This morning, a whole other thing happening. Check it out now. Oh. And tonight, tonight, tonight is one more Saturday night with Gary Lambert. Tomorrow morning, kind of chill, walking in the neighborhood. Tomorrow night, Eddie Dixon is going to be here. Yes, yes, Eddie Dixon is going to be here. But right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen. One more Saturday morning with Jeff. Metzger. Hi. Thanks, Dave. Good morning. Good morning. What's shaking? Nothing much. What are you doing? It's Saturday morning. One more Saturday morning. One more Saturday morning with Jeff Metzger on 11 11 with Jenna. What what else are, am I, would I be doing? Where are you? I'm in Oakland. It's hard Where to keep up. Keep track. I'm 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 home. You can tell. I'm in the same spot. That's not a that's not a backdrop. It's not a backdrop. That's not a Springsteen backdrop. Nope. Probably should make that. I can take it with me and then I can hide. There you go. Then you then nobody always, would I'll be. always be home. What, um, how was last weekend? How was the food? Food was, oh, food was good. Um, food was good. Yeah, we, the tasting was like, you know, it was like in half an hour, we had like 15 things. It was, it was a full lunch, but they tasted a lot of good stuff. Yeah. So they're working on a couple of choices, but it's, yeah, it's cool. It's what, cool. Did, what, like what? Let's see, there's three apps. They're going to do a vegan with a zucchini thing, and then there's going to be a crostini with a with a goat cheese spread. And what was the third one? I forget what the third one was. But then they're going to do a chicken. The chicken was very good. Chicken and a beef dish. 
Hmm. For the main uh, yeah, so I, I, you know, I, it was 111 degrees out there, although it was nice inside. Oh, you got to hear this one. So the the, the dog. So they, they go they did the walkthrough at the uh, at the venue at the house where they're going to have a wedding. Weddings in November, so uh, they uh, Lisa gets in the car with them. They go early, so I can stay back with the dogs. Mm -hmm. Because the dogs have to go to doggy care, mm -hmm. and we want to minimize the amount of time in the doggy care. So I come down like a couple hours later, and the Idlewild sits up kind of the top of the mountain, and there's two roads to get up there. There is Highway 74, which, let's see, the best way to describe it is, if anybody knows the geography of Southern California, you can take it begins at a town in the Inland Empire called Hemet. 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 I've been to Hemet. Okay. So Hemet and then takes you up and, and, the, and the road goes up the hill near uh, and then down the other side to Palm Desert. Okay. Am I still what here? Happened? What happened? I'm not sure. Oh, hold on. Can you still see me? I'm seeing a little tiny picture of you. Can you see me now? No, nope. little tiny picture. You there? Really? I'm here. But I, I saw picture. something go to do too. In the middle of your screen. What's on Facebook? I'm not sure. Who's on first? Yes. I don't know. He's on third. So I'm not there. Oh, well, just continue. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. I'm trying to see what's the... That's mysterious. What is everybody else seeing? I'm turning on Facebook to see. They see a square that says Jenna Mamina. That's what they're seeing. That's what I'm, that's what they're seeing. They're not even seeing me though, are they? Yeah, they're seeing me. Yeah, you're there. Okay. Well, we'll just it'll be the voice of Jenna and the and the I could start feeding you words and it could be your words and my voice. I, I could practice the guest host thing. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> But your, you know, your 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 smiling face, you know, inspires me to be funny. Now I'm gonna have to just look into a dark screen. Just pretend. I don't know what happened. I could FaceTime you. That's okay. It's like the wizard. You're like, you know, like the wizard behind the curtain. I'm like Charlie of Charlie's Angels. We don't even know if anybody's commenting. Do they turn us all off now? Since you're, since it's no, just me. Patty's there. Rob is there. But what happened to the other 40,000? I'm not sure. What? Where did you, you, you scared them off? What were we talking about? 111 degrees. So you have the one road, the 74. Okay, or you can go off of the, take the Highway 10, which the, the main freeway, and in a little town called Banning, you can take road 243 up to Idaho. Comes in the okay. other direction. Okay? Yep. Two roads. So... Uh, I bring the dogs down. The, the road from Idlewild to Palm Desert is 74. It's an hour drive, windy road. Somebody turned me on to this great podcast. Oh, T.L. Burbridge is doing a doing a yes. Uh, he's got a podcast, a groovy. Funny he had he had Billy Kreutzman and John Mayer on his latest one, and I listened to that all the way down. It was great. Oh my God, you, you have to listen to this. Oh, Kreutzman talks about his microdosing, and and Mayer talks about. Um, going to a therapy going to therapy and and uh and how he's learned to play all the jerry parts and uh, uh what they did in the pandemic and you know the, the, they didn't have the stage you, you can relate to this they didn't have the stage to work their stuff out on uh you know this their, their stuff i mean their life stuff you know the, the stage to go damn it is that you or not me? alarms it's me Anyway, I was watching the, I was listening to the podcast. Everything's cool. Get down there, drop the dogs off at dog park, dog park, doggy daycare, meet up with everybody, 
have a lunch. And uh, on the way back to the dog park, I think it was on the way back to the doggy daycare, I see in the distance, kind of in the direction I need to go, there is a big fire, big smoke up the mountain, okay? And I can't tell where the, uh, you know, I mean, the mountains, you know, you, you can't see the roads, so you can't really tell is, is that in the direction we're going or way far away, but it, something struck me. Anyway, Lisa looks up the, looks up on the online, and sure enough, the 74 is closed. There's a fire. It must, it started obviously in the time that I had been in Palm Desert, okay? So we look up the route to go. The, the hour and uh, hour drive now is going to take two hours and 40 minutes to go back the other direction on the 10 and go up the 243. You go up the, the 10 going west and then turn and go south up the mountain. You with me? Yes. So I'm figuring, I don't know why it's going to take two hours and 40 minutes. We, we get on the 10, everything's going fine. All of a sudden, boom, a halt. And it takes us an hour and a half to go 17 miles. Oh, until, good until we get Until we get to the turnoff to go up the mountain. Oh, my God. I'm not the most patient. <laughs> In bumper to bumper traffic, never have been, probably never will be. I do you say things to other drivers? No, I sometimes I just I just stir in my seat and then quiet with an occasional, you know, just some expression of frustration for an hour and, and a half, seventeen miles in an hour and a half. And correct me, it was were the the two dogs were with you? Lisa was already gone. <laughs> And no, uh, the, the, the uh, Joey and uh, Allie went back. Oh, this is the best part. Allie and Joey went, went went back to Orange County, so they took West. So we had Layla. But the best, so Allie and Joey are calling us. He's got a four wheel drive truck. He jumps off the off road, and there's this off road uh, road that parallels the freeway. Okay, and they're flying up the road. You know, <laughs> going normally while everybody stopped at three miles an hour. They're just cruising on this uh, on their off road. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So that that anyway, started out your morning hill. quite nicely. We made it up the hill to go to the winery to see the last probably half hour of the blues player that was we had been told to go see. And you know, are they well, having music at the at the reception? They're having yes, they're having a. I think a jazz trio. Nice. And then they, I think it, it, when dinner ends, they leave and then there's somebody playing music, you know, DJ or some sort of thing. Fun. To go with the whiskey bar and the cigar bar and the- Whiskey whatever. bar. Somebody, I think there's a whiskey bar for after dinner. Do you smoke cigars? I do. Do you have a preference? Uh, yes. Do you get them from out of I've learned, I've learned, yeah, I've learned which ones I like, you know, so I get what I like. You and Pa Ben would have had fun. Yep, I like them. Outside, sit outside, you know, nice warm night. And yeah. you do the whiskey tequila or whiskey and cigar thing? Sometimes. Sometimes. Rum. Does Lisa? Whiskey. No. No. I'm the only degenerate in this family. <laughs> Yeah, because your kids aren't out there, are they? Well, your brother, of, is your brother? Yeah, him too, him uh -huh. too. <laughs> well, we have three rooms set for for Mexico and all, all parts crossed, I will hopefully be performing during Jazz Fest at the International House Hotel in New Orleans. This year or next year? This year. October. October. Which, which week? I'm hoping both. You know, I, I threw it out for both. I'm like, we might as well try this. So I'm waiting to hear back from Sean, who's the owner of the hotel. And I should know this week. Good. I hope you do. You know, I was thinking of going. Well, with the, wedding, with the wedding coming up, I'm just not. It's just too much traveling. Go so, for the weekend. I, you know, it's dead and company. No, I, I, that would be the last. That's the first weekend. 
and that's right. I think right when we leave, when we finish up in Laguna, it's either right wow. when we finish up or right after. Plus, I've learned the Dedding Company would be the last reason I would go to the Jazz Fest. Jen and Mamina, Rolf Stern. That would, the, that would be the first reason. There you go. But the big act, not the reason, you know this better than me, this, this, the, the big acts are not the reason I go to Jazz Fest. You go in that huge field, either you get there really early and then you, you know, and you blow your whole day, or you are so far away that, I mean, you're literally in a different county, not literally, but figuratively. So, you know, and then you're not seeing all the other stuff. Um, well, so, you get 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. Well, but not with the, not on, not if you want to get to the accurate stage. You want to get the big stage. So there's just no reason to me to go. Well, you that. hang out with me, and then we go backstage. Well, that's well, there's another reason. That's right. You probably would with Gary. You probably would have that access. No, you? I have. Uh, Gary's only been to jazz. I've been to jazz fest 27 times. I have my ways of rolling. Well, I'm close. You're, you're only 25 ahead of me. See, come on. But I went. Bruce was there both times. So that, you know, that was the day. So you that basically the day he's on, you know, you're, you're not seeing much other stuff. Right. Because you want to be, if you want to be there for Bruce, you need to. Yeah. You know, you could, I guess you could, you could walk, you could walk in and out. You could walk back because everybody holds your seats and then go watch the other tents and come back. And yeah, you could, but it's that place, you know, it, that, that field holds like 75,000, just that one stage. So um yeah it's it's so i mean then company's playing here they're you know, playing here two weeks later or something so why was just saying it was it wasn't just dead and company not the reason. I'm encouraging you the second weekend was the weekend i was considering it but now we're getting awfully close to the to, to my birthday uh, which if i am there that weekend we'll be having a birthday party are you sure you're not jewish with all the guilt you're throwing on people I'm telling you brother i am my mother's ashkenazi Oh, okay. Well, that's, that, that explains it. That explains this, this, uh, this, you know, this I'm heavy Jewish and Catholic. Pressure. Boom. <laughs> well, you have to have some in there. I got two. it. I got it all. You hang, you hang out with us enough. Um, yep. This is true. So My jazz, whole life. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. Hmm. But then I guess I'll just wait to see you in February of next year, 2020. Okay, well, you know what? I never say I don't never. know for sure. I'll know this week. I never say never. What is it? It's just a, a pop in a plane, you know, to jazz. And you have fun going down there because everybody that's go on the plane is going to Jazz Fest. True. So the party starts there. Good morning, Armando Ortega. Assuming Jeff you can still even get flights now because. Oh, you can. That is the hardest, one of the hardest flights of the year to get is from Los Angeles to New Orleans or Jazz Fest. This it is, is always packed or just ridiculously expensive. Yeah. And they now that it's it's getting closer already, people are, I, I should have bought my ticket last week when I was first talking about it because it was really cheap. And now it's not because I'm looking at it right now. But oh well, that's just what. Well, well I, I I have to trust that you're looking at it right now because I can't see you looking at it. Right I am now. looking at it right now. I will tell you. You could be BSing us about a whole lot of things right now. We've never known. This is true. Um, let's just let's just do that for fun. You haven't figured out why you're not on, huh? I. I'm moving, I've done a lot with different cameras and it just doesn't seem to be working. Is this the first time you've never been on live video or just you had to do audio or have you done that before? Like there's, this is crazy. If I was flying from Chicago, there's a, it, and I don't usually do nonstop or one, um, multiple stops, but there's a one stop leaving at 3.50 and arriving at 8.25 p.m. from Chicago for $104. On which airlines? Southwest. Well, why would you not book that right this second? Since you're not, since it's not non-refundable, I mean, so you, you're not, you're not, you'll get the money back. I mean, you're not, there's nothing non-refundable about it. All right. 
They have a new thing. I didn't realize Southwest for a little bit more money, you can make it fully refundable, not just to be able to be used for future flights, but fully refundable. But for a hundred and four dollar flight, you know, you're gonna you're gonna spend a hundred and four dollars in the next year on Southwest. And there's an and then there's and then ninety nine dollars on the way back. See, the trick is to leave. Yeah, I should fly to Chicago so I can take advantage of the hundred dollar flight to go from Chicago to New Orleans. Right. Do you have? And if you have points. <laughs> That one, you missed that one. I got it. Um, if you have points on another airline, you just use them to Chicago and then you fly there. Mm -hmm. Lisa, come to New Orleans. I mean, I don't even know if it's going to happen or not, but that's what? the plan. $202 and four forty. That's right. You have, you're not confirmed to be playing, huh? Correct. And I'm not even confirmed that I'll be where I'll be. Who knows where I'll be in October? I was going to be here. I'm going to be here in September because I'm after Telluride, I'm going to come back out here. We don't even know where you are right now. We just have to trust that you are somewhere. <laughs> you don't even know if it's really me. I, you know, it sounds like you. Hey, last night's show. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy it is because, you know, it kind of sounds like you a little bit. Did you see Corona Roki uh -huh. Thursday night? Uh -huh. It was fabulous. Wait a minute, I got, what was that? There's, there's worth, a, worth a watch, worth a share. I'll go, I'll go back and watch. And then last night was Cookie Marenko and Rob Morocco. Make sure Marenko you got those Mar names. You, you sure it wasn't Mar the Marenko Morocco. Mamina, Morocco, Mamina, Marenko. That's the way that the, it's easiest to say. Morocco, Mamina, Marenko. I cracked the left. I got really- I hear somebody. Well, yeah, look, well, come here, little girl. Come here. Come here and say hi to everybody. A little centerfold. Here she is. Oh, here she is. Oh, my hi, little pretty darling. Pretty girl. Look at my little girl. Hi, Layla. Good morning. Good morning. She's Good so morning. Cute. What was she doing? Yeah. She got loose again this week. What? She got loose. I had of her, she slipped out of her harness when she was at, Lisa was with her at the, um, at the shopping center. Shopping uh, center, like an outdoor shopping center. Yeah, she went. She went to have lunch, and she wrapped her around the, the thing around the chair and something. She got twisted, and all of a sudden, she slipped out of it, and off she's running. She's a Houdini. Don and she's Houdini. running and running around the things. But the problem is, is she doesn't. She has still no conception of cars. <gasps> so Lisa's trying to get her back. So she's she's running in and out of the parking lot. Oh. Oh yes, yeah, I wasn't. I didn't know about it until afterwards. So she, but she finally figures out to open the car door and say she's leaving, and Layla runs right into the car. But you know, she's just she gets free, and she's not. She just likes being free. So, but the problem is, is that she doesn't. You know, if something attracts her attention, she can run the wrong way. So I don't know. We ordered new harnesses this week. We think are a little bit more foolproof. Maybe double harness her. My brother double harnesses his dog. Really? What about a chastity belt? She look after that photo she posted the other night. She needs. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Layla did. Layla was uh, doing her best impression of a centerfold on Play Dog or magazine. Yeah. What did I call it? You had. You had. You had it called uh, pen, pen, some penthouse puppy or something. Penthouse puppy. Lillian's was penthouse puppy, and yours was was it. Puppy centerfold. Puppy yeah, they were in, in, in various uh, in, in various levels of doggy pornography. I have this other one of Lillian, and I was trying to find it, and I couldn't. But she's sort of leaning; she's sitting up, and then her waist is t is twisted, and it's quite graphic. Like really, Lillian? She's she's triple jointed. Hello, Alex J. Martinez. I miss you, brother. I miss you. I miss you. Let's go to Thai church tomorrow <sighs> so we have a concert today are you going to hear live music today i am Stay not here i am not we are going to some friend's house for dinner tonight but nearby but what time's your show tales and tongues alex called it <laughs> what um, time 3 p.m pacific standard time oh, perfect hi layla layla <laughs> She's singing to you. Yes. Oh, we're doing the army crawl. Oh my goodness. Oh yes. You trying such to be a flirt. She's such yes. a cute little flirt. 
She is just a little flirt. There's no, you're a flirt. And now she wants to play with her, with her toys. I'm supposed to play with the toys. She doesn't understand the concept of Saturday. Oh, really? There is your toy. What is that? that? Looks like a little crab of some sort. It does. Okay, is that a crab? Okay, here we Layla's go. Layla's got crabs. Sorry. Layla's got <laughs> one, uh, two. After that, three, photo. Three. Oh. Yeah, she's raring to go. Alex, where are you? Everyone's probably wondering where I am. Is this is this kind of awkward, everyone? I hope I can figure this out by tonight. So, are you watching? Are you watching basketball? Are you happy with what's happening, given the situation? I'm just I'm just, I'm not happy, not happy. You know, it's, uh, I'm watching with, you know, kind of neutral. As an Albany, New York or Albany in the Bay Area? Oh, oh, I would like the Nets, I would like the Nets to lose. I'm still, oh, really? I'm still, I'm still not over Durant leaving the Warriors, so screw them. I know. And Milwaukee he, really He's really playing like really well. He always plays really well. He's one of the probably, I wish I liked him ever. Certainly one of the five greatest scorers ever. I wish I liked, I, I don't know if I would like him if I met him. I want to believe that no, I would. He's, about, he's, he's basically, you know, he runs from team to team. You know, he's got whatever issues he's got, you know, he isn't over them yet. So, um, yeah, he, he has a big chip on his shoulder and, but, you know, to watch him play is a, is a like a ballet. I still hope they lose. <laughs> Milwaukee and move it should be over. Milwaukee just completely gave away game five. Yes, they did. And so it um we'll see what happens tonight. Although I'm not gonna well, be able to watch. if I'm watching it at all, I will um it no, will don't, they will don't win. Text. I'm not gonna be able to watch till I get home tonight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to record it and watch the end of it when I get home. Armando wants to know if I'm experimenting with new radio technology. No, I actually accidentally unplugged something and then it never came back on. So I don't know what happened, but okay. My friend Alex is performing the duties of live in nanny and cook for my good friend and her eight year old son and her mom far out, man. Oh, you guys, I, Alex, I'd love for you to be on the show. Please, 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 please be on the show. And tomorrow night, Eddie yeah. Dixon's on tomorrow night. I know I mentioned that earlier. But I sure wish I could oh, really? figure out why this camera won't work. You've seen Eddie, right? Yeah, I like Eddie. Eddie's, Eddie's cool. very cool. Eddie's yeah. Okay, see, so yeah, I keep plugging it in the camera, and even but even my camera from my actual laptop won't pick won't pick up. If I unplug this camera, let's see what happens. Do I appear magically? Let's see what happens if I go into. What is it? Settings. Since you're here, we'll do this together, Jeff. Because it's just like you are um, hosting the show today. Well, um, let's see. Tell us more. About what? I'm supposed oh, to be saying. I'm supposed to be saying. You're, I'm supposed to be determining the uh, the uh, itinerary. Well, go ahead. Okay, Alex is going to be on the show. Cool, we'll talk. What does everybody want to talk about? You got a gig today at three. You there? Pretend I'm not here and you're just guest hosting. What would you be talking oh, about? I, right now? I was going to prepare for that, you know. Okay, let's just pretend. Oh, sh you know, well, this is, I, I'm not, I don't want to do impromptu. I was, I was all set. You know, thinking of all the things I was going to do last week, but then that's, you know, here we are. Jenna is long gone. <laughs> AKA Wally Pip. Life. So here I am to take over, right? You thought you were getting Jenna, you got Jeff. First guest host. Would love to hear from you all. Send your cards, letters, and call in. Should we talk about food? Should we talk about music? Should we talk about sports? I need to. I need to get on the uh, the thing to know what they're what they're talking, what they're saying here, Jenna. I need to. Eleven eleven. Marta says eleven eleven with Jeff. Yeah, eleven eleven with Jeff. There you go. That would be a quick little a uh, little change. We got eleven eleven with Jeff. It is Saturday morning. 
Jenna's technology just went kaput. And here I am to talk to you. What would you like to talk about? You need to, are, are you reading what's happening? No, what's everybody saying? I'm, I'm, I'll be producing you now. Pretend like okay. I'm just in your ear. Wait a minute. Oh, we can talk about beer trucks. That's yes, right. Okay, Rob. Yes, we can finally talk about beer. So what's everybody's favorite beer? I'm not an IPA guy. I'm not a, I'm not a uh, craft beer guy. Give me the old style. Last, like last week, uh, I started with Coors when I was a kid. Then I went. How old to, were you? I was, oh, I think 14 when I was probably doing that. So, and then I was in Colorado last week. So, of course, when you go to Colorado, oh boy, you get these big cans of Coors at the Red Rocks. But now I go for the, uh, now I go for the German beers and the Guinnesses. But I'm not into the craft beers. What's everybody like for beer? What was the next? What was the next thing he said? Beer trucks. Now trucks, I don't know much about. Somebody's going to have to talk to me about trucks. Tr trucks is not my thing. Cars are really not my thing. What kind of car do you drive? Do you drive an Audi? I drive a Lexus, a little hybrid Lexus I've had for, gosh, I guess seven years now. You got to keep watching the feed, brother. Oh, that's right. Okay. Well, is that okay if I keep looking at my phone? Yeah. Molson. That's what, yeah, Rob. I like Molson. I like Stout. Carl. Yes. As long as it's not too, as long as it's not too stouty, that would be good. Uh, butt wiper. What the hell is butt wiper? <laughs> I think it's Budweiser. Oh, that's true, huh? Yeah, I would, I would, I would say that's a better, that's a better description than the real name. That's true. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. So 12 years old. So other people, so Alex is 12. He's been drinking. He was drinking when he was 12. Mondo liked 14. Newcastle. I think about 14. Where were you? Where was I? In Turlock, California. Did you sneak the beer from a party? Did you, well, what's the story? Oh, I don't know. You know, who knows where we got beer in this. You know, there was, there was ways to get it. There was ways to get it, you know, and then, yeah, you know, that's true through high school, go to high school football games. Out in Turlock, there's canals. Uh, uh, it's surrounded, there's canals in and out of town just for the irrigation of the, of the farmland. And so the parties as teenagers, you know, you go up in the country, like we call it out the country, which, I mean, could be anywhere from five, three minutes to 20 minutes outside of town. You didn't have to go very far, you know, and you'd meet on the, on the levees next to the, next to the canal. I mean, if you did this today, oh my God, the things that we did, holy moly. So we'd all, you know, you'd meet, you'd, you'd drink out in the, uh, you know, you poured out as many beers as you could, as fast as you could, then get in your cars and drive back into town and go to wherever you want to go. Those That's were the days. Those right? were the days. I guess I guess the statute of limitations is probably uh, expired for those crimes, huh? Good. Is there is there more than a at least a fifty year statute of limitations? If anyone would know. Mm-hmm. Under California law, I probably do know that. Chocolate stout, man, nah, that one isn't so great. There are multiple. How, there are many different you, chocolate stouts. Newcastle, I'll buy Newcastle on Mondo, but not the chocolate stout stuff. I like the Italian beers, Peroni, Moretti, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the Belgian, uh, the Belgian, you know, the Belgian beers are good. Who likes the Belgian beers? Germans, Becks, Heineken. I remember going to the Heineken brewery when I was in college. You missed a question. Oh, I, I got to keep looking here. So I'm not used to do the Mexican preference. Oh, that's a good question. Oh, Mex uh, I like Carta Blanca. I like Bohemia. I would say those are my two favorites of Mexican. Tecate is good. Yeah. Oh, oh no, uh, uh, Negro Modelo is my favorite. How's that? Keep reading the post. I had my first beer at 11, I think. Takati at my sister's graduation party, yeah. The 
beer with the monk on the label. Is that's the um, is that is that the uh, the, the tapestry? What are, what's the, uh, the? I'm having a senior moment. The Belgian beers. The one that I like in picture. I can't remember the name of it. They have all kinds of different ones. Saint Bernardus. What else we got? Snuck out of my who is this? We snuck them out of my dad's case. Well, we did that too. That and every other thing I can find in my dad's bar. Who, who didn't? I keep reading the feed. Well, how, how can I? Is that, but, but I'm on camera. Welcome <laughs> to my world. Brother. Oh, Shemay, that's it, of course. Good job, my mother. Yeah, Shemay. Shemay has all kinds of them. They have different ones, but I like Shemay. Like, I mean, you know what? Maybe I'll have to do that today. That'll be good. Shemay today. What did you make for dinner last night? Well, last night we made um, we made this aura salmon. God, that stuff is good. The New Zealand salmon, which we got, which we got way too big a piece. We got a four pound piece this week. So, but we're having it tomorrow for Father's Day as well. But we still have like three pounds left. If you can get here quickly, you know, you can have salmon with me. It's the best. I should just run down there. I should jump on a plane after my gig. There you go. Salmon. See, I made, then I made a little pasta with uh, one of my favorite pastas, just with chopped olives and sautéed chopped olives, garlic, and red bell peppers and olive oil. Not red. Red pepper flakes and olive oil all tossed together. And spinach. But yesterday, I, I got really, I hit the wall last night. I went swimming yesterday in the afternoon. I had a lot of energy, but I don't think I had enough water afterwards. And I think I got dehydrated in the early evening. And boy, oh boy, did I get, after dinner, I was done. Kaput. What, what am I missing here? <laughs> I forget. <laughs> I agree with you on the Negro Modelo. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I like Negro Modelo. There's a, there's a, uh, now, I'm, now I'm getting hungry for Mexican food. Rob's my worst beer, Indian pale ale. I'm not an IPA guy either, Rob. We, we'll, when we get together, that will not be anywhere nearby. Uh, Alex says, sounds, what is Alex saying sounds good about? Um. So here's a question for everybody. How about lime or no lime? I'm a no-line guy. Depends on how cheap the beer is. I don't, I, I just drink stouts. There are actually some really great stouts in Mexico. And, and I had a wonderful stout in Guatemala last year. I'm trying to think about what, we must have drank Guatemala beer when we were in Guatemala. Because I always go for the local stuff. What, um, a Guinness, I like Guinness a lot. Carl's a good lime guy. Rob's a no lime guy. Well, I guess, Rob, if you and I sit down and have beers, whatever each one of us orders, I get would be fine with the other, it sounds like. If you added capers and chopped anchovies to the pasta, you'd have put nesca. That would be true. That would be true. And I am, I am, nobody likes anchovies more than me, Armando. In fact, my dad used to, um, well, he started making Caesar salad. He, he found the original recipe in a Sunset magazine in the 50s and started making it from scratch the way that the magazine said, which, which almost no places do it um, exactly as the, as the um, recipe called for. But he always did. Have I told you the anchovy story about Caesar? Tell us. So he'd, he'd make the, he'd make the, um, he'd make the Caesar with anchovies and you know, all this, the original ingredients from the, to, to be true to the recipe are the following. You would, you would, if you really want to do it true to the recipe is you'd get a wood bowl. It's, um, it's lemon and, and red wine vinegar and dried mustard and, um, Worcester sauce and, and pressed or chopped garlic. And anchovies, and then, mm -hmm. then, then um, with and croutons, and then you toss the salad with olive oil and 
toss, throw in the, the, the dressing, toss it, and then grated Parmesan cheese, toss it again. That's the original. The question about the anchovies. So my dad would always mash the anchovies in, as I do. You, you know, you you take the you mash them, and that would be part of the the uh, recipe. Um, so several years ago, one of our close friends down here, um, his father, who's now I think 102, if he's 101 or 102, is in Detroit, and he has written a weekly food and restaurant column in the Detroit Jewish World News for 74 or 75 years. I got to meet this guy. Oh, huh? I got to meet this guy. His name is Danny Raskin. And so he would come to California to, to visit his kids. And we, we'd have dinner with him. And whatever he'd do, whether he'd go out or whether he'd, he'd eat at his son's house or he'd come to our house, he'd go back and, he, and he'd write whatever his, his uh, food ventures, adventures were in California. We were at our friends, the Metzgers. And anyway, we get into this discussion one night. And Danny says, you know, the anchovies are supposed to be on the side. You're not supposed to mash them in. Oh, Danny, that's wrong. Here I'm, you know, it'd be like it'd be like me telling you about singing. You know, Danny, that's that's wrong. No, Jeff, he said that's it's you don't mash them in. You, they're supposed to be on the side. That's the original recipe. Well, you know, I do the research, and sure enough, he was right. Anyway, doesn't change the fact that I still mash the anchovies in the thing. But that so that's the original true recipe. So I bring that story up because when we were kids, and my dad was making it. When we were little, you know, you have these memories of kids, and as I know you do too, he would take the he wouldn't use the whole can of anchovies for the for the um, the salad. He would he would say, okay, here's my little sparrows, and he'd bring he would come over and he'd take one of the anchovies and he'd drop it in our mouth, the whole anchovy. Yum. And, and so that was a that was a tradition that I passed on, and even to the day to this day, when I'm making Caesar salad here. And my 31 year old daughter is around. I still grab an anchovy and I shove it in her mouth. She loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Does has has the little one over there tried one? Layla? Yeah, she had an anchovy. Oh no, I don't know. We would that would be I don't think we want the, the mess that would probably ensue. Are you hungry, little girl? Oh, look at this. She is she is she is I think she wants breakfast. Either that Lillian or she's sitting right next to me, but no one Oh she wants breakfast. Look at she's oh you have to see. She's doing her chasing the tail. You want breakfast? What time is it? Oh, I think we're gonna have to go give you breakfast, huh? Yeah, what do you want, what do you want a toy? What are we gonna do? You wanna play the ball? Play the ball. Ball. Layla, sit. Oh Lillian heard that squeaking. She poked her head out just now. Wait, what's okay. the squeaking? <laughs> Tell we wake up Layla. Oh, you got the ball? Here we go. Ready? Ready? Go get it. Oh, okay. What what am I missing here? What are this what are the still a winner? Uh anchovies, okay. Lime and corona. Yeah, lime and corona. I like corona, but it's not my favorite. Let's see what he got. I would sink a lime wedge in it by pushing a wedge into the bottle, hold my thumb over the opening and invert the bottle. There you go. That <laughs> Yeah, okay. That works. Is it wrong I'm voicing Layla's replies? What? No, you're, I'm just, for some reason, I'm just not on, I don't know, the camera's not working. Lillian is very happy to be here. But I think you're doing a great job of guest hosting. Am I doing okay? Yeah. Because I can't get a signal in here. Hi, Lisa. Hi. So her technology went bad, so she's not on camera. It's just a picture. She, she her screen's blank. So I've turned into the guest host. <laughs> I think Layla wants to play. Layla wants to play. And what else, and Lillian what, does what else, too. What else are we going to talk about today? Mm. Oh, that's we won't funny. talk about that. What's that? Never mind. <laughs> TMI. <laughs> um. Lisa's tailbone injury. We'll leave it at that. Ah, okay. Well, well, yeah. So, what is that room behind? When I, when I, when we are looking beyond where the um, bathroom, where the, where the foam roll. That's a bathroom right there. Okay. Yeah, it's basically it's a Jack and Jill. You know, if you walk through that, there, that's the bathroom, and then it goes into another bedroom right next door. How many bedrooms? 
Well, this is technically called a four bedroom house, but the, the fourth bedroom is actually Lisa's office in the front of the house, um, which I think was rearranged even before we got here. I think the original design when it was built was that bedroom had a bathroom, but by the time we got here, it's right off the, it's right off the living room. So it's, it's perfect for an office, not mm -hmm. for a bedroom. Mm -hmm. kind of, it's a weird place to put a bedroom. That's a great place to put an office. And so then, let me think for a second. Wait, oh, you keep what You got to read your posts, man. Oh, shit. I don't want to interrupt the flow. Bruce behind you is giving me Michael Jackson vibes. Why, why is it giving you Michael Jackson vibes, Alex? When he talks, to, when his puppy, I reply. <laughs> But what's what's the Michael Jackson vibes? I'm trying to see what why it is that. You know, I'm probably going to add a couple pictures here, but I don't think Michael Jackson will be one of them. Mm. Speaking of adding photographs to my room here, Miss Mamina. Yes. Is there going to be a new one coming? Or do we have we have, have you brokered that thing yet, or is that going to be a little? Uh, he's he's kind of a um he kind of he's he works for um what's that band moon alice okay you know about moon alice rogers i've heard of him i've heard of him i can't see him so he's with busy it. with roger right now and he needs to find that particular negative okay cool we'll see i'm patient have you, have you seen everyone who's here? Patty's here, Armando's here. I have a question. What was Jeff's first live music experience? First concert, the, uh, the first one I remember is my dad took us to see Dave Clark Five Groovy. in Modesto when I was probably eight or nine. At least playing piano. I remember it was, a, it was in an outdoor football stadium, and I remember we waited, we waited, we waited, we waited. You know, in those days, they come on, they play 20 minutes, and they're gone. And my dad was just, just despised rock and roll music. They just, you know, it was that generational thing. Real jazz guy. You would have loved my dad. You would have loved my dad. My dad would have loved you, loved your music. He was a traditional jazz who would go, you know, wander off wherever he was to go find jazz to listen to. So that was the first, but then what after that? Then after that, when was it that I went like on my own for the first time? Hmm. There was a couple of outdoor. Yeah, you know, I think I think I know what the first one might have been. I think the spring after Woodstock. Right when Chicago had done their that live Carnegie, no, live at, yeah, Carnegie Hall, was it? Their box set? Remember that one? I, I kind of, my brother. It was Chicago Transit Authority. And, and it was their, their first album, and I think it might even the second album, they were still CTA. Uh, this was when Terry Kath was still alive, when they were really a blues and rock and roll band, as opposed to the pop band they became after he uh, inadvertently killed himself. You know the story there? There's a good documentary about Terry Cap. He was kind of the originator of Chicago. It was really his band from the beginning, even though a couple of the other ones, Peter Cetera and the guy who's the horn guy kind of took it over after he died. But he was, you know, he was high one day and he was screwing around with his gun. I think as a joke, he, you know, put it to his head thinking it was not, it was not loaded and boom. And the band, it was a, a very bluesy, very rock and rollish band before then. So they put out, they had put out three albums. This is before Saturday in the Park, which I think was Chicago Five. Um, and they put this, which was still the, probably the first and maybe the best uh, live uh, record that I remember. It was like a four album, four record set. It had three albums out for their, their, like their week run at, at uh, Carnegie Hall. And right after that, uh, right about that time, it might have been 70 or 71, I forgot which spring, maybe it was 71, they toured and they did outdoor shows at, um, and then Stockton, great outdoor show, I think that was the first one. I remember getting high and then having to meet my parents 
uh, it was a daytime show, and I meet my parents for dinner <laughs> afterwards uh, at age like 14, you know. Um, and then the next year, and, uh, 10 years after, they did the same thing that's outdoor at the football stadium at, uh, at the University of Pacific. Um, 10 years after, remember with, with Alvin Lee headlined. And unfortunately, somebody got mm -hmm. shot and killed in the stands that day. This was post Altamont probably by a couple of years. And that was the end of the outdoor rock and roll shows at Pacific for probably 30 years, 30 years. Wow. And then I remember going back for some reunion there and then they did it one day with Huey Lewis the News, but that's another story. Any event, I think that was my first concert. I think Chicago might've been, been the first one. After Dave Clark five, didn't see the Beatles. My sister, my sister, my, my sister was at Candlestick Park the night the Beatles did their last show. And I have, and I have told you the story, right, about my half sister's brother, who's part of the the Waldos, the ones that that were the group that did the 420 thing. Have I told that story? Tell it again. Well, it's a little late because it's June, but you know, the 420, um, the stories that most people hear are wrong. 420 um, started by a group of five San Rafael High School students. What? This is, oh, this is documented. And, and of course, since I know one of them, who's the half brother of my half sister on the other side, they would, they would, they would, they would meet at 420 at the Sir Francis Drake statue at San Rafael High School to get high. And 420 was the code, because that was the time that they would use to, so their parents wouldn't know what was going on. There was five of them and they gave themselves the nickname, the Waldos. And somehow it stuck. They never copyrighted it. Never, and, and that's how 420, I can, I can post, I'll go find the article, I can post the article of them. But that's the real story of how 420 was created. That's crazy. I did not know that. 420 in the afternoon. Yep. I mean, I knew what time, you know, but. I no, know. I didn't know Probably that. Did anyone else know that? 70, 71. Yeah. I'll, I'll dig up the article that, that somebody wrote several years ago that told the history of the whole thing. So, yes. And every and every year about this time, somebody you know says, "Come get free this or come free that." that. But I mean, if you think of the worldwide millions, if not billions, that they could have realized had they trademarked the brand, but they didn't. So they're cool with it. I think all five of them are still around up there. Don't know why I got off on that tangent. Concerts. Concerts. I don't know. Still don't know. Anyway, yeah, and then in Northern California. Then, uh, well, I'll get that other times. Then, then, oh, then, so then, then my senior year of high school, I was editor of the school paper, and that year, rather than to print it on campus, the teacher made a deal with the local paper. Turlock Journal to go do the production at the at the um, where they did the, the, the daily newspaper. So I, you know, I'd get on my bike and I'd ride downtown, which is you know a ten minute ride, and I would do all the layout, and do all this sort of stuff. If anybody's ever worked in newspapers, you know, before the internet, how you had to put a paper together, you know, how to make it printing and cutting and pasting, and I learned all that stuff. In any event, so I'd go down there write for the paper, and as being a sports and music guy that I was, I started asking the people, hey, can I call and uh, and represent the paper and go see a show or go see a baseball game or whatever? And they said, sure. So I started with the A's and the Warriors, and uh, and then I thought it would be a good idea. Let's see what happens with uh, Bill Graham Presents, who's doing all the shows. So that's what I did. I started calling, and uh, 
the PR guy at the time, who was one of Bill's chief lieutenants, his name was Zahn, the Z, Artman. And um, he was this, as you would expect, this gruff, arrogant, I don't know if he was arrogant all the time, but to a 17 year old kid calling for free tickets, he was arrogant. <laughs> and he would make me, he, he, I'd call for the shows, usually the Oakland Coliseum, the Cow Palace, various places. And he'd make me write a story. If I wanted the next tickets, I'd have to write the story, it'd have to be published in the paper, and I'd have to send it to him. And only then could I then call for the next show. And he made me do this every time. And, you know, I, I mean, so I'd go see Elton and Jeff Bertal and Beach Boys and, you know, one here, there, and everywhere. And I'd get to go and see, and they were always great seats, you know, first 10 rows. And, uh, so yeah, that's how I started going to see more concerts that way, too. And so then, then 40 years later, 40 years later, um, I'm watching some, I see some ACLU fundraiser come up. This is like five years ago. Some ACLU fundraiser come up. And um, one of the things they're offering is uh, lunch and a rock and roll tour of San Francisco put on by Joel Selvin. You know Joel, right? Oh, Joel, of course. Of course, everybody knows Joel. Joel was the, 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 the no, he was a long time rock and roll. on the show. Chronicle, you know, and everything. You know, every, so he write, he wrote everything. So I said, that sounds pretty cool. I made the, I made the minimum bid for $500 and nobody ever bid it beyond it. So, so I get the, uh, so I win the thing. So I said, who's going to go with me? My brother, of course, who was living in rent time. So I fly up, we go, you know, we pick a restaurant. Uh, Joel meets us in his cool 65 or 66 Mustang. We have lunch and he, and he takes us on a tour of the city get off at Haight-Ashbury, we're walking, we're walking down the street, he's pointing out all the dad's houses and the whole thing, we, let's go to Tower Records, Keith had to make a business call, so we needed, he said, let's go to Tower Records, we walk into Tower Records, me and Joel Sullivan walk into Tower Records, right, and he's, uh, he's talking to all the guys, and he's pointing out all these records, I mean, that, that was the coolest part of the whole thing, anyway, when we first started the conversation, I started telling the story about being a kid with Bill Graham, and start railing about what an asshole Zon Artman was, and Joel looks at me and says, he was one of my best friends. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't ruin the day. It didn't ruin the day. It was, we, that was, that was great. So yeah, and he's got a couple, he's got a new book out about, uh, I think the, he just wrote a book about the, um, the pre, the, the Jan and Dean and the beach, the surfer bands, which I haven't read yet. It just came out in the last couple of months. At that time, when we met with him, he had, had he had finished, but it hadn't been published yet. His 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 book on the post Jerry death, mm -hmm. which was which was not flattering at all to Phil Lesh, and apparently uh, Phil and Joel have not been on particularly speaking terms for a long time. And uh, yeah, they're not they're not pals. So uh, the book came out like a year later, and then. And Layla wants breakfast. Read the feed. So I think unless there's any more questions, I'm going to end my quasi guest hosting. Patty had a 65 Mustang. Yeah, that's a, that was a cool car. What was the best gig I've been to? I would say I, that, that one's, I think, pretty easy. The best gig that I was at was this. I saw Bruce Springsteen in 1978 at Winterland. Wow. I did not see him live again until 1999. Staples Center in LA, the arena opened up. A friend of mine says, let's go. Bruce did the opening four shows. A friend of mine says, I got, whose who's law firm had a box. And um, the suites at Staples Center are in the, literally miles from the stage. But okay, fine. He says, let's, my buddy of mine says, let's go. We'll go to the show. I said, cool. So we go up there and we sit in this box. And from that distance, I was so enthralled. I mean, you know, from that far away, he still, he still captured you so incredibly, so profoundly from that far away that that was, that's probably the most memorable because that's what started me on that journey after that. 
I said, I have to go see this again and again and again and again and again and again. And again. How's that? Is that a good answer? I don't know. Check it. Check your phone. What are they saying? Uh, they're not answering. There's a delay. Take Amanda says he's heard the 420 story on NPR. I'll have to post that thing. I remember to do that. That's good. Yeah. So I, that that gig is. I know it was the best one. It's the most memorable one, because, right? Isn't that? Sometimes it's just what. It's it's the things that change your direction in life. Good morning, Nicole. Oh, I think you did a really great job. <clears throat> and your first well, with, with, quasi with, with, guest hosting show. Give, give, give me some preparation, and then we'll have we'll have a whole we'll have a whole agenda here. Okay, what are you doing next Saturday morning? Uh, next Saturday morning. Let's see. Probably at eight eleven, I'll be sitting in this chair. What are you going to be doing? Maybe I'll sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll still have have the same challenge happening. I'm not sure. I'll be here. Okay. But anytime you want a guest host, you are more than welcome. I you, was you fine. passed with flying fine. colors. Okay, I'm okay. You're all right. I can answer questions. You're tell pretty story. Great. Tell stories. Maybe we'll do golf stories next time. Yeah. You have, you have oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, legal stories. Hi, I have this problem with my, you know, there's the, the legal story guy. Yeah, he's, Jeff has great stories. No doubt about it. But I so do you, Nicole, and I would love to have you on the show. And no soon. legal questions. How's that? Sure. I'm, I'm happy to not talk about law. So no music today. No, we got no music. No, we're not going to music today. There's no music. Yeah, no live music this weekend. That's strange. What, what's you no? Know, you know, none of the people are playing. No, none of the regulars are playing. You know, there was one last night, but I was oh, I was beat last night, so I wasn't going out. No, nothing, nothing for a while. Layla is being so patient. Now she's rolling over and she wants me to scratch her because she really wants breakfast. So I'm going to go. Don't overstay your welcome, is one of my mottos. So I don't know why you can't see me because my camera is here. It shows that it's working, but something, something is just not flowing. So I'll figure it out for later. Thank you very much. Three o'clock, I will be back live for a performance with Glenn Appel and Robin Lewis. Thank you, Jeff Metzger. That was fabulous. Thank you all for being here today. I kind of like this. I think, I think it, it could be a thing could be like a monthly thing. What do you think? Well, that photo of me is in Mexico at my friend's house. Sad to not see you too, Patty, but I'll see you on Wednesday morning because tonight is Gary Lambert. Tomorrow morning, we chill. Tomorrow night, Eddie Dixon. Monday morning, we meander. Monday night, we meditate. Tuesday morning, we chill. Tuesday night, Dr. Andrew Rader, Wednesday morning, Macon and Bacon with Patty. Wednesday night, possibly cookies and cocktails with Shauna. Thursday morning, we'll chill. Thursday night, conversations with the creatives, my sister, Lisa Mamina. Friday morning, Armando Ortega. Friday night, display and share. And next Saturday morning, one more Saturday morning with Jeff Metzger. Let's give him another round of applause. Thank you all for being here. Stay safe, stay healthy, be nice. <sighs> Jeff, like thoughts, jolly words, 
and a jamming heart. Take it easy, you guys. See you at three. Love hard. Really hard, really hard, really hard, really hard.